Today's class, we're looking at a practice question using uh, calculations with chemical equations. In this question, we're asked to calculate how much gas is produced from the explosion of nitroglycerin. And the question tells us, this is from our textbook, page 115, problem number 3.66. Uh, if uh, 3.184 grams, sorry, it was, if it was 2 ml of nitroglycerin is exploded, if they give you the density, and uh, so from there we calculate the, the, the grams of nitroglycerin and they also tell us that if every liter of gas occupies, sorry, every mole of gas occupies 55 liters of volume. And then they give us the balanced equation for the explosion of nitroglycerin and all the gases that are produced. So the first step here was to find out how many grams of nitroglycerin we had. So we used density equals mass over volume. <coughs> we rearranged the equation to find the mass of nitroglycerin. Here are the two um, variables that we need to solve that. We plug in the density and the, the volume. The milliliters cancel. We get 3.184 grams of nitroglycerin. We then divide by the molar mass of nitroglycerin to find the moles of nitroglycerin because grams will cancel. I showed that here. This is 227 grams per mole. There are 1.4 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of nitroglycerin. And then the stoichiometry is used to find out how many moles of each type of gas is produced. So it's the 12 to 4 stoichiometry for carbon dioxide, 6 to 4 stoichiometry for nitrogen, 1 to 4 for oxygen, and 10 to 4 for water. So I multiplied this number by each one of these ratios to get all these mole quantities. That many moles of CO2, that many moles of nitrogen, and so on. I then added all the moles of each one of the gases, and I got a total value of 0.1 moles of gas. I then multiply by 55 liters per mole of gas under the conditions of the explosions, as it says in the question, and we get 5.59 liters of uh, gas produced. Uh, after significant figures is factored in, uh, we're only allowed two, I believe. Is it two significant figures that we're allowed in the question? Let me just double check. Question 5.66, no, 3.66 rather. Yeah, 55 liters. That's two significant figures. So um, we're only allowed to report the answer to two significant figures. 5.6 liters of gas is produced. In the second question, moving on to the second board, we have limiting reactants. The thing that finishes first is the limiting reactant. They have a fancy definition in the book, but really it's uh, what it boils down to is if you have a recipe and one of the ingredients runs out, that's what's going to limit how many things you can make. So, for example, if you had, if you had to make pies, and the pies involved having uh, slices of pineapple, let's say four slices of pineapple, and one cherry in the middle, if you had, say, eight slices of pineapple, and three cherries, how many, um, how many pies would you be able to make? Well, you need four slices for each pie, and then you could put a, a cherry in the middle, and then you'd have one extra cherry, because you'd be short of pineapple slices. So even though you have more pineapple slices, you run out of the pineapple slices first, because you're, re you're using them in the ratio of four to one. Now this same, thing, same phenomenon is observed in stoichiometric Rea uh, reactions with stoichiometric co coefficients. It may appear as though you have more of one reagent than you have of the other, but the one that is in, uh, in abundance, or appears to be in abundance, is actually the one that's in short supply. And we see an example of that in question 3.71 in our text. It asks, sodium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide as follows. Two moles of sodium hydroxide plus a mole of CO2 gives you sodium carbonate solid plus liquid water. Which reagent is the limiting reactant when 1.85 moles of sodium hydroxide and 1.0 moles of CO2 are allowed to react? Okay, so we, I showed the chemical reaction and the amounts involved. So it looks as though we have an excess of sodium hydroxide, but you have to keep in mind the stoichiometry of the reaction. It's two to one. You need two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of carbon dioxide. So in fact, this is the limiting reagent. This is the part, this is the part of the reaction that's going to end up uh, finishing first. 
So how do we do the calculations? We start from what you know is the limiting reactant. Once you've identified the limiting reactant, every calculation has to start with the limiting reactant because that's the one that's going to determine how much you get to the other things. So I start the reaction with uh, the calculation by saying 1.85 moles of sodium hydroxide uh, times the stoichiometry of the reaction. One mole of CO2 produced for every two moles of NaOH used. Moles of NaOH cancel, and we get that 0 0.95 moles of carbon dioxide is produced. In the next part of the question, it asks how much sodium carbonate is produced from this reaction. So we again start with the moles of NaOH, not the stoichiometry, but the moles of NaOH, times the stoichiometry, and in this case it's 1 to 2. One mole of sodium uh, carbonate is produced for every two moles of sodium hydroxide used. You write the stoichiometric coefficient like that, so that sodium hydroxide cancels, and you'll get that you get uh, that produces 0 0.95 moles of sodium carbonate. Uh, then they ask you, the last part of the question is, how much uh, CO2 is left? Well, you start off with one mole of CO2. And be careful of this. Sometimes you get questions like this on the exam. You think you've answered the question because you find out that this much is made. But what if the question asks you how much is left of the CO2? then uh, you might say, well, they use this much CO2, but that's not what they're asking. What they're asking is how much is left. So you have to read the question carefully. It's, a, it's an error that happens quite frequently uh, when I'm correcting exams. The student does everything correctly, but you can tell they understand that what's being done, but they fail to answer the question, so they lose a couple marks for that. Anyway, 1 minus 0.925 gives you what's left of the CO2, 0 0.075 moles. Uh, on the next question, introducing a new concept, uh, which you will find uh, covered also in other videos on this playlist. It shows um, hydrogen sulfide reacting with sodium hydroxide to give you sodium sulfide in water. In this question, we're looking at percent yield. They tell you that the reaction proceeds with 92% yield. We're not going to use this idea until the very end. We're going to do all the calculations the same as always. Except at the very end, we're going to calculate the percent yield, the actual yield, uh, versus the theoretical yield. By the way, the definition of percent yield is that actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. This is what you think you would get if everything reacted completely. This is what you actually get. You get when you divide what you actually get by what you could have gotten if the reaction had proceeded 100%, and you multiply it by 100, you get what's called the percent yield. And the truth is that in real-world react chemical reactions, you don't always get 100% yield. This is part of what industrial chemists study, so that, as to increase the efficiency of their chemical reactions. They know that some reactions only proceed by 50%, so they have to keep on recycling the materials to increase the yields of whatever they're making. So we start off with 1.5 grams of hydrogen sulfide and 2 grams of sodium hydroxide, divided by the molar mass of each. So the hydrogen sulfide is two times the molar mass of hydrogen plus the molar mass of sulfur here. And it gives you that many moles of hydrogen sulfide. Sodium hydroxide a total of 40 grams per mole. And you get that many moles of sodium hydroxide. So it looks like you have an excess of sodium hydroxide because you have 0.04 moles of H2S and 0.05 moles of NaOH. But again, the stoichiometry has to be taken into account. For every one mole of hydrogen sulfide, you need to have two moles of sodium hydroxide. So in fact, the limiting reagent in this reaction is again sodium hydroxide, even though it appears to be in excess. So we start the calculation with the, so with the limiting reagent. We multiply by the stoichiometry of the reaction, which is one mole of sodium, um, sodium sulfide. They're asking you how much sodium sulfide is being produced. One mole of sodium sulfide is produced for every two moles of sodium hydroxide used, which means you're going to get half as many moles of of sodium sulfide being produced. This is the theoretical yield. Once you get this number, you then multiply it by the percent yield. So you're going to multiply this number by 0 0.92 because it's a 92% yield. And that will give us, let's look up here, that's number 380. That will actually give us. So we're going to multiply by the molar mass of sodium sulfide, so it's 22.989 
77 times 2 plus the mole mass of sulfur, 3.2066. The actual final number you get is uh, 1.795. 154.122. That's exactly what the calculator read out gave me. Of course, you're only allowed to report your answer to three significant figures, so it comes out to 1.8 grams of sodium sulfide is produced. Okay, if, I, I, if I hadn't included this factor of 9, uh, 0.92, uh, I would have calculated a yield of 1.95. Okay, that many moles of sodium sulfide is 1.95, but you don't get the full yield. You only get 92% of that 1.95, which is the 1.8. And that is a limiting reactant question.